So this is the first tutorial video for uh, using Onshape to create an eraser. Uh, so the first task in your designer's toolkit uh, portfolio. So this is task 1A to create the eraser. So go to Onshape and sign in. Most of your um, usernames should be your username at carshotandboys.org. Um, some of them might be at cbsc.co.uk, but should be username at carshotandboys.org and your password. Uh, again, your teachers can help you if you have got any problem with that. Now, when you get started into Onshape, the first thing you're gonna do is go to create. So we're gonna create a document and I want you to call it Eraser. Um, I've already got one called Eraser, but let's hope, hopefully it will let me do it. All right, so very first thing to do is gonna to be to click on which plane you wanna create your drawing on. Um, for this particular example, we're gonna use the top work plane and work from yeah, the top and build it up. So click on top and then go to the sketch tool to click on sketch. And you could start drawing immediately on that sketch, but because it's tilted slightly, it might look a bit distorted. It might not look like the rectangle that you want it to. So if you ever want to um, flatten it out, what you do is go somewhere empty on the page and right click and go to view normal to sketch plane and that will flatten it out. So now we can see that we're drawing on the top. So you've got all your sketching tools come available now that you're in sketch mode. So you can go and click on the corner rectangle and then click in the center and drag out in the sort of uh, top right direction. All right, now as soon as you let go, it doesn't matter how big you draw your rectangle, but just um, drag it out. And as soon as you let go, it's gonna ask you to input a dimension for the length. Whichever one's got a square around it, it's gonna be where you can type in. So we want a length of 50, so type in 50. Now at this point, you might notice if it's not coming up as 50 and it's more coming up as like 1.2 or 2.3, then you've probably got it set for inches. Um, in which case you need to go into your preferences under your name and your preferences and make sure that your units are set to millimeters and not inches. Most people would have done that, but it's a good way of, of spotting it if it isn't, if it is set for inches, it will be moving up in smaller numbers rather than higher numbers like this. Anyway, so we've typed in 50 for the length. The next one is waiting for us to put a, a measurement in for the width. Um, again, it's got a rectangle around it, so it's just waiting for me to type in 20, enter, so 20 and enter, and that's our length and our width set. All right, we don't need to do anything else to that sketch, so we can click OK, and then we are ready to extrude it. But before we extrude it, I want to view it from a different view. I want to view it in isometric. All right, now you don't have to do it by going to the viewing cube and doing isometric. What you could have done is just use the right mouse click um, to position it and move it around. But actually, um, just putting it into isometric is quite useful. Okay, so there we go. So that's ready to extrude into 3D. So next we go to the extrude tool and then click on your rectangle. So we tell it what we want to make what we want to extrude into 3D. So it's taken sketch one and extruded it. Now the depth that we're gonna set is gonna be 10 millimeters. So 10 and enter. And there we go. That is our first few steps for the eraser. Now, to make this look a bit more realistic, we need to angle some of the edges. So we're gonna use the chamfering tool next. So the chamfer tool is up here at the top. Click on chamfer. And then we're gonna use this edge, not the whole surface, but just that one edge there. So one line needs to go orange. Click on that. It'll show you a preview of what that chamfer looks like. And the distance needs to be 10. So we go 10, enter. And you can see there it's chamfered off that corner uh, or that edge rather to create more of a rubber and a razor type of shape. So we've done that to the top one on that side. If I use the right mouse button to spin it around, I'm gonna do it onto the opposite corner over here. All right, so we've got what is essentially like a trapezium parallelogram type shape. All right, so we've chamfered off those two opposite corners. You can click OK. And that is most of our rubber done, our eraser done. So we just need to round off some of the edges because it's unlikely it would come with such sharp edges like that. 
Um, so we're going to use the fillet tool next, which is up here at the top, fillet. And we could click on the edges like we did with the chamfer, but we're going to click on a whole surface so it's a bit quicker. So we only need to click that one. Now, the first thing we notice is that five millimeters is far too big. So that needs to be set for one. So one and enter. Um, and then we do the two big surfaces, top and bottom. Um, we can also do the two ends and that puts a nice one millimeter fillet on all of the edges of our of our eraser. Now, like me, I've just gone and zoomed and I've got lost. So a good little tip is if you lose track of where you are, you can press F to fit to screen to bring it back into the center again. So that's our eraser pretty much done. Um, before we put this into our portfolio, there's a couple of things that we'd need to do. So um, there is some extension work, which is to add some graphics to this eraser. Um, it may be that that might be a very basic uh, bit of branding. So it might be your name, for example. Um, it could be a logo or it could be um, something that we take off the internet and export it as a DXF. Don't really have time to do the third option, but I can do the, the, the most basic option. Um, to add some text onto this, we select the top surface and sketch on it. Just like we did at the beginning, then you can right click, view normal to sketch plane. Um, in here, we can draw some text. Uh, now, I'm actually going to take um, a well known brand of stationery. It might be Helix or it could be um, another, another company, for example. Um, Stadler tend to be another good stationery stationary company so there's something like that maybe um, now for we're not going to be able to copy the the font but we can get something close and we could maybe if you really wanted to try and draw around that sort of head type shape but um, maybe go for something a little bit simpler There we go. So that's quite simple. It's just uh, staples and there's a little bendy bit on the L to make it look like a, uh, a paper clip, I suppose. So we'll go for something like that. So we've selected a uh, text. When you draw a text box, you start in the bottom left hand corner and drag it up. Uh, in there, we're going to put a company logo. You might want to have it in bold or italic. What does this look like? It's not in bold or italic. Um, you can find yourself a font that'll do uh, now you can see it's gone off the page so I'm going to need to resize that um, and set the length of this to something like 40 maybe maybe a bit less than that maybe 35 alright mm -hmm. so there's our text if you want to move it use the bottom left hand dot to reposition it. Try not to get, let it lock onto anything that you don't want it to lock onto. Uh, so we'll click OK to that. And what we can also do is on that sketch, sketch two, which is where the text is, if you right click and edit it, we might be able to add on that little sort of paperclip flick that we've got on there on the L. Um, so we can use this spline tool. Uh, might have to do it separately. So if we extrude that first. So we're going to extrude that by clicking on it and it's going to be a very tiny amount, 0 0.1 millimeters. And you can either add or remove it depending on whether you want it to be raised or lowered. Uh, I'm actually going to have it slightly raised. I'm going to put it on add. And if I had a bit more time, I could go in and make another sketch and create that little flick on the L. But that will do for now. Um, the final part of this is going to be to color it in in a sensible color. If you right click on the eraser and go edit appearance for part one, then that will give you the option to change its color. So I'm going to go for like a sort of pinky type color and press OK. 
And then the final thing before we put it into our slides is going to be to turn off some of these things that are getting in the way. So the origin, for example, all these are over on the left. If you click on the little eyeball, it will hide the origin, hide the top plane, hide the front plane and the right plane. So we're just left with our eraser. So at this point, you can hit print screen. Um, if you're on a Chromebook, it's control and show windows, which is above the number six. And then you can control V to paste it into your uh, portfolio slides. It may be that you might want to show it in different angles. You might also want to show it in different rendering options. For example, uh, shaded without edges is quite nice. Um, you might also want to show it with perspective view on so that you can kind of see it as it gets smaller further away. It tends to have a, a bit more of a realistic sort of appearance. You need to be careful with the lighting on it, but that looks pretty good. And then we can take as many images out of here by print screening and dumping it into your portfolio as we can. So that is the very basics of making an eraser. Good luck with that. See you soon.